Now I'd like to sort of switch and give you a short blurbs or short tastes of some of the current work that I'm doing at Columbia. So I have a whole variety of different projects going on. Um, I'm looking at why do people defect in social dilemma situations, so what motivates defection. I'm looking at what do people understand about the risks of climate change, um, trying to create an environmental behavior scale that I'll be talking a little bit about because it, it relates to the behavioral wedges that we heard um, about last night real-time energy feedback, and perceptions of others in dictator games. So that's actually looking at how does social pressure or social norms affect your altruism in a particular situation. So let me just give you a short taste of real-time energy feedback because it's really related to what, what you all are trying to do. Abrahams et al. sort of did a, a literature review, and I can send this paper out to anyone that's interested, in 2005 about different ways to facilitate conservation in the home. Um, and what he said was is that if you have real-time energy feedback, there are a variety of ways that you can actually facilitate energy conservation. One of them is by providing frequent, um, uh, frequent data streams to individuals. So not just providing uh, a sort of a bill at the end of the month, by, but by providing many, many different uh, periods, shorter duration periods of information to individuals. So that's changing the duration. Changing the content of the information that you provide is really important too. Since energy is really cheap, oh, sure, go ahead, Chris. Do you have a question? Oh, um, so uh, changing the content is also really important. Individuals, especially lay individuals, do not think in terms of kilowatt hours. And the, the fact that energy is really cheap, it may not be very effective to actually pre present this information in terms of dollars either. So changing the way you actually provide the content to individuals may also make a difference. How do you present this information this information? Yeah, you're saying if someone sees this information more often in their home, mm -hmm. they'll conserve more energy. Right. How do you present that to them in their home? Okay, so there are a variety of ways you can do that. So with real-time energy feedback, a lot of uh, companies, a lot of startup companies are designing hubs where the, you can actually have real-time energy um, profiles for people in their homes at all times. Yeah, we're, we're, we're now going to experiment with putting these smart plugs in the tapestry of building 124 feet uh, and actually have Craig study the results so that people can literally see outlet by outlet the feedback. And what you're going to discover is that, for example, having your TV on during the day when you're not there is using this huge amount of energy. So we're, 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 <coughs> there's a whole lot of technologies just emerging now to give people real time feedback. They've started with Experiment with smart meters where people can go online and literally see moment by moment how much electricity they're using. So sort of to, to make it more, um, to sort of explain it uh, in a different way, um, there are two ways that you can do it. You can do it at the utility level, so basically providing more information in your utility bill at the end of the month. So you can provide smiley faces, for example, if you're doing better than the average or worse than the average, was it frowny face. So that's one way of doing it. So that's coupling it with the utility bill. But that's sort of a little bit removed, and, we, and as researchers, we don't necessarily have access to that information. Another sort of getting closer to the home is actually putting these plugs that what John was describing is into your socket, which acts as an interface between your device and, and the energy supplier. So you actually can get that information through Wi-Fi to one of these um, hubs in your home, which is like a display panel, um, and that provides you real-time energy feedback. And there are many ways of doing it, like a, a whole variety of companies that can sort of couple that to a hub which is in the home, they can couple that to the internet, so you can log in, like a Google Power Meter is another example. So you can just log into your Google website and you can see how much energy your home is using um, uh, hour by hour. Does that make more sense? Is it more tractable? Um, I, I, I don't know if I would really pay attention to any one of those so far. That's, that's actually what we're, what we're trying to study. Because the, the problem with all of these different things is that they haven't been done, the two, two separate things have not been done, or two, two separate things are lacking. One is a large sample size, because they've all been done with like maybe 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. You need like at least 1,000 people to be able to say, all right, this is really what is most effective in, in changing some of, some of these behaviors. The second thing, what, you're, what you actually alluded to, is behavioral persistence. So for example, if you give me an iPod, and I've never seen an iPod before, I'll pay a lot of attention to it for the first day, month, you know, a couple of months. But what happens after that? Am I still paying attention to that, or does the behavior sort of 
whittle down or whittle away. And that's something that hopefully we'll be working on, both a large sample size as well as trying to measure behavioral persistence over a, lo a longer period of time. Early 80s, we were building solar systems in homes and using the readout panel that told you the temperatures and the amount of available hot water you had. <coughs> Where you put that display in the house made all the difference in the performance, even though it was the same equipment. Putting it in the kitchen is really good the because people are always in the kitchen. If, if it was in the kitchen, then we knew the duration of, uh, and the maintenance of the equipment and the performance of that system was always, always better. Yeah. And that, and we asked people how they interacted with them. What we found was they come in the first thing in the morning. They would literally look at the look at it there. If it was in a hallway, if it was in a maintenance room, any place yeah, so else, good. it was in the kitchen. Was was the one place where it made a difference. Yeah. Hopefully, during 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 today, you can share some of those um, positive ways of actually. With, in terms of placement, in terms of what types of feedback, in terms of how we should give feedback. Because, I'm, I'm, you know, people do not understand kilowatt hours. They do not understand necessarily dollars because we're not pricing it correctly. Placing them in the kitchen where people spend a lot of time. Those are all really great <coughs> ways of influencing behavior. Let me offer a, uh, a very tangible example from uh, a group that we've been working with in Chicago. There's a, a group called Center for Neighborhood Technology that's doing some really cool things. And they have developed uh, a little device. It's a little glowing orb that, uh, you know, it's about this big. And it has a radio signal that it gets, you know, every hour it gets live electricity pricing from the grid. And it changes color. So if electricity is expensive, it glows red. If electricity is cheap, it glows green. So when that thing is sitting there on your counter, in the kitchen or whatever, you know, hey, you know, if it's red, I probably should wait and do my dishes later, or you know, run my run my dryer a little bit later. If it's green, it's it's okay to do it. And for some of the populations that we're dealing with, and I know that you know numeracy is not necessarily dependent on education, but you know, for a lot of the low income populations that we're dealing with, you know, these things make a lot of difference. They it is not necessarily uh, a highly numerate population. So having something that's just very straightforward, very simple, may be a good way to reach that population. Absolutely. What was the name of that? Energy or the, no, the, the, the Center for Neighborhood Technology. I can give you your name. It's cnt.org. The vocabulary that you've been presenting is very much homeowner, user, individual based research. Do, do the same principles and behaviors and psychology apply to the commercial world and tenants and landlords? That's a great question. Um, they do somewhat, but they change a little bit as well. So there's a lot of um, research on, on status and comparisons, in-group and out-group. So a lot of people mentioned in-group and out-groups yesterday. And the thing is with climate change especially, and this is more philosophical, is that we don't really have an out-group. We're all in this together. There's a lot of diffusion of responsibility. So we don't necessarily have someone that we're working up against and competitively to try to get stuff to be better. But in terms of commercial, because you, I mean, com so if you were to sort of take individuals and just scale them up to a, a commercial building, for example, a lot of these would still work. 